Hey there, Vagabonds, I'm Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis, and whether or not you're dastardly enough to steal the gold, or the heart of your lover, you could be incorrigible enough to steal the scene. Either way, you're gonna be a scamp. So why don't we talk about scoundrel concepts, today on WebDM. This episode is sponsored by City of Mist RPG. If you've been wanting to play a fantastic game of super-powered urban fantasy and learn the rules as you go, the starter set is for you. Get booklets for players and MC, pre-gen characters, location maps, dice, and more, plus a $10 coupon for your next purchase. It's a great deal. I love playing this game. My character, Declan, was able to bend reality to his whim using mechanics that were really easy to use, they felt powerful, and balanced perfectly with the group. Plus, the opportunity to play as both a regular person and their super alter ego in the lore of the city, such a fresh take on modern urban fantasy. The starter set is also currently on sale on Roll20 right now. Don't miss this one, folks. Link in the description. All right, Jim. Uh, all of our uh, all of our people need to get out their their black vests uh, so they can be their own Han Solo today because uh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna, let's talk about scoundrels yeah. as a concept. Uh, yes. I mean, they are a, to me, they are a main one in any kind of literature or fiction, you know, uh, they're, uh. they're, they're always there, always breaking the rules, <laughs> but never too far. Right. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 We're not talking like villains, you know, we're not no. talking about like, you know, just real, real dastardly, um, you know, baddies or anything. We're talking about those just, they can't, can't quite follow the rules. Don't quite fit in. Uh, you know, they could be just sort of reflexive iconoclast, just like, you can't pin me in, you know, whatever it is that, you know, that's the mm -hmm. established order uh, rebelling against or, um, or or sort of the the companion archetype to that or, or whatever is, is those that that overcome their challenges through in you know unconventional means right they outwit rather than overpower or mm -hmm. they you know they they circumvent rather than just like you know going straight through something and so i feel like the scoundrel is a very broad archetype has a lot of of uh really cool expressions in D. &D. there's a lot of ways that you can think of these kinds of characters and mm -hmm. like in many ways, you could say, like, well, aren't all D and D characters scoundrels? <laughs> you know, aren't they all just a little I, break the mold a bit? Don't quite fit in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, as 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 the uh, game uh, has expressed itself recently, it really does feel like most D and D characters are scoundrels. But what I do love is <laughs> that the scoundrel is the is the kind of the concept that rises above uh, anything that's closer to uh, what we would consider class. Um, sure. Yeah. Because as we all know, most scoundrels have no class. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm funny. Um, anyway, um, but but what I love about the scoundrel, to continue the point, is the fact that you can, doesn't matter what class you pick. It, it really is, I mean, obviously like rogue, bard, those can can feel more scoundrel-like. And they, they do have the, the, the mechanics to support a scoundrel's lifestyle, whether it be deception or theft or smuggling, things like that. Um, right. But it doesn't really matter. You Mindset. can have a, yeah, you can, I mean, a cleric of trickery can be a scoundrel, right? Certainly. So like, yeah. it doesn't really matter where you're coming from, like class wise, what is lovely about the scoundrel is it's all in the expression. Like it's all in how you present. Yeah. Um, because it's mostly what it is really for scoundrels, isn't it? It's, it's how they present themselves and uh, yeah, yeah, bravado, moxie, mm -hmm. audacity, mm -hmm. all of those things I think are, are hallmarks of the scoundrel. And and when I start thinking of that, I I think of like a, the classic kind of picaresque hero, um, uh, you know, someone who is just in it for whatever feels good moment to you know they're in it for moment to moment sense of adventure and accomplishment mm -hmm. but no like real long-term goals or 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 overarching ambition you know they might they might be a bit of a dabbler you know they've got some skills but they're kind of all over the place someone who's like i know a little bit of magic a little bit of fighting a little bit of you know trickery uh that kind of thing they could be an outright like just someone who cons people you know manipulative um and and like to me this kind of character is classic D, &D character mm 
right? Like, yeah. I, I think D&D works really well when you look at, say, the, the picaresque literary genre of, of, you know, wrapped scallions and, and immoral characters who have no real ambitions and, and just sort of trick and, and, and fool their way through life for whatever momentary pleasure they're pursuing. Like, that, that kind of irresponsible lifestyle is, is fun for a fantasy game because if you did it in your real life, you'd just piss everybody off around <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So it's I mean, fun if you're to born play, into right? Wealth, like, <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're born into wealth, you can usually handle that. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah just the. <laughs> I mean, hell, the Big Lebowski is a is a freaking scoundrel. So you know, <laughs> yeah, that's it's sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I I really like uh, I really like this archetype uh, uh, and and play it a lot especially in like uh, uh old school D or or in games sort of run in that spirit because like there really is no higher principle other than whatever this character wants at that moment right whatever mm -hmm. whatever you know whether it's vengeance and some sort of vendetta whether it's the pursuit of some sort of pleasure um and 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 even or maybe even like some higher ideal knocking at their door you know and and saying like hey, it could be could be that you fight for something bigger than yourself or or or, or something but that for the most part this character is about like just going with the flow and um you know living a life where they're you know able to live it up as much as possible without having to put too much effort or work in it like it just it really mm -hmm. appeals to me and i think it's an archetype i keep coming back to because it's just so it it fits so well with my vision of what D D is you know uh, yeah it's it's uh it's very amos burton from uh from the expanse <laughs> <laughs> He's got an idea yeah. and he's just going to go this direction and you're not really right. going to stop him. <laughs> right, um, right. I, you know, contrast it with the, you know, the, 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 the do-gooder types, you know, the ones that are like, well, you know, I've got, I've got a noble goal that I'm pursuing and I'm, and I'm, I'm you know, or I'm, I'm out to save the world or something like that. And it's like, no, nah, yeah. my, the, the picaresque hero is just no pressure. I just, why am I here? Cause I wanted this thing. Cause I wanted the gold, the magic, the, mm -hmm. you know, the attention, you know, whatever it is, that's, that's why, you know, if I'm not very, very fun from a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, adventure perspective. All right, let's, <laughs> all right, let's, let's move on to, uh, to our next concept. This would be the, um, the cheater of death. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. What's your first thoughts there, Jim? My first thoughts is, is that I, I want a character who's returned from death many times right mm -hmm. like and, and especially in a setting where, where death has a personification right where death isn't just like a state of, of, of being it's like no that's death the angel of right or, or something like that where where maybe when you die you have an opportunity to like play a game or to to, to somehow like get one over on death or like oh no wait a, wait a, wait a minute death I, I brought someone else here someone else gonna take my place here you take them and I'm gonna go keep doing this thing and mm -hmm. and you know I'll, we'll, we'll see you later right just someone who through luck uh, you know <laughs> whether dumb or in or made of their own <laughs> uh, skill or, or or some the moxie uh is able to defy death to do things that others w would just see as just like that's that no there's no way you'd survive that there's absolutely yeah. none and there's just some quality about them that that they survive and thrive and and mm -hmm. just keep moving on from you know so that death can't catch up with them <laughs> yeah no i when i when i thought about that the first thing i thought of was uh was spike from uh, cowboy bebop like mm. it's even written into his backstory in the show where obviously there was some big gang stuff happening and he got shot presumed dead but no he's still kicking on and he does the most insane things and you're like how did, like at some point you're gonna you, you're not gonna be fast yeah. enough and it's like your luck's no, gonna run no, out he, yeah no <laughs> it's like no he's he's good he's, he doesn't care it's not his that's not the point it's it's uh, all the all of his past uh it's just so much angst but uh right definitely right. <laughs> uh, but you know most of the bebop crew is uh you could you could put to one of these um oh sure sure <laughs> uh, they're all scoundrels um <clears throat> for sure uh, yeah 
what, what do you who do you think of when you think of a a, a, a cheater of death? Like what's a what's, oh, yeah. what's oh, a character yeah, yeah, yeah. that pops out for you? I mean, so like, I I don't have like a specific character in mind when I think of this, but I I think of someone who is, you know, like all right, everybody else, um, you know, when death comes for them, they accept it, right? Like, mm-hmm. this is, the, you know, oh, you're supposed to die, or yeah, I did this stupid thing, or was in this dangerous situation, or whatever, but this would be a, a mm-hmm. person who death comes for them, and they're just like, no, I, I'm, I'm not, like, not not today. What, what, what can I do to get you out of this? So maybe they're a bargainer, right? Maybe there's somebody who's always wheeling and dealing and trying to, like, trade favors and, uh, and like, uh, someone who's, who is, um, <laughs> who's always willing to negotiate, right? Always willing to say, like, I, you know, I, I, I th- this is, uh, my life is way too important for me to just, like, give it up uh, for something stupid like being stabbed or you know, fired bald or death spelled or something like that or too old or whatever you know like i i have something else in mind can, what what do you think what, what can i offer you right like can i trade something can i trade a favor you know so i think of somebody who who deals in favors and uh and and just the the sheer audaciousness of, of approaching say like a giant dragon and going like well you know i have an offer for you Will hear me mm-hmm. out and so in many ways like the cheater of death kind of archetype is also the, a, a talker uh and and mm-hmm. could be uh malicious and manipulative like if you played them that way but is less like devious about it and more just slippery you know <laughs> just mm-hmm. you're never yeah. gonna pin them down you can't <laughs> yeah you're not gonna find out uh their secret uh, no no to, yeah to thwarting death um all right, let's uh, let's move on to our next concept, which is one that has been um, uh, used throughout history. Um, sure. This would be the outlaw noble. I mean, this yeah. is. I mean, come on, who, who? Everybody knows who Robin Hood is. Like almost, I'm right. pretty sure almost everyone knows who uh, Robin Hood is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just. <laughs> You just that, get, uh, you're gonna, you're a less hold. hyperbolic statement. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Almost yeah, everyone. Like, right, right. I, I think what I like about the the outlaw noble here is is the idea that like they could be a part of legit society, right? Yeah. Like they 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 have a path to to like power and influence and prosperity, whatever it is in the setting, that is legitimate. But for whatever reason choice circumstance what have you they find themselves on the outs you know that 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 those paths to legitimate uh power and prosperity and whatever are are cut off from them because of this and there's merit for it to be a choice right there's merit for 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 it to be something that they willingly give up and say like yeah i I could have had all this i could have had this you know the the benefits of this you know noble position that i have and the privileges that come with it but i've deliberately turned my back on that for some other reason and and it could be a higher ideal it could be uh love it could be whatever um but they now have to live on the uh you know sort of the fringes of society um it could be involuntary it could be like their name was tarnished or you know the the source of their legitimacy and 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 privilege has been taken away from them their noble titles been revoked or their lands have been stolen or something like that and so the idea of, of a of someone who is can can swim in in both pools right you know walk in both worlds has an appeal mm-hmm. you know they they're they're comfortable in high society and in you know the halls of legitimate power but they're just as comfortable roughing it on the outskirts and and with uh you know maybe with people who didn't have a choice in the matter and have always been sort of on the fringe mm-hmm. there's something very appealing yeah. to that uh that archetype for me yeah like i like as you're describing it there you actually made i was like listening to your description and i was like oh like daredevil like kind of mm. is he's he does his good work during the day and he does as much good as he can within the bounds of the law and then at night sure. he puts on a different suit and he takes care of business it's a bit of a scoundrel's uh take on it uh you know yeah like, there's this gray area uh with the noble outlaw where you know, it's acknowledged that like, yeah, all things being equal, like this, you know, this, this character represents a state of, of, 
of, of you know unevenness or disequilibrium that that could be fixed if this larger thing in the setting or or whatever is uh is resolved um and so then that sense they are emblematic of some sort of dysfunction or some sort of problem um mm -hmm. and I, that's why i think it's such a a rich archetype to uh to draw from for characters oh most definitely most definitely um and uh folks out there never forget uh head on over to patreon if you would like a a rich array of uh topics to draw from uh with our podcast uh every week uh that can help spice up your game um all right jim um yeah let's 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 move on uh because this is a this is a a, a big one also that is there's many examples of but the the criminal with the heart of gold yeah, uh, or just has like a like a divine. Everybody wants to be Malcolm Reynolds, but nobody <laughs> wants to be Malcolm Reynolds. You know, sure, but right, <laughs> but he does represent that very. You know, uh, or I mean, hell, this is even Han Solo, like to a, sure. to yeah. an extent. Um, it, it's it's more of somebody had to find his heart a little bit. Sure, but, yeah, uh, yeah, it, it awaken a sense of, of justice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that that this kind of touches on some of the themes that like the noble outlaw would have. Um, but in this case, like I'm thinking of any revolutionary, anyone who's who sort of like sees an injustice or 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 wants to do what's right come hell or high water like classic chaotic good could could easily yeah. oh, fall yeah. into this archetype right like i don't care what the laws of society say i don't care what the customs and the norms whatever else are like i know this is right i'm going to do it and and like to me the 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 real interesting thing is is what do they do about the consequences do they accept the consequences of whatever undesirable mm -hmm. behavior they get get up to that lands them in the scoundrel archetype <laughs> you know like do they do they mm -hmm. run from it do they try to mitigate it like it, what is their at what point does their sense of justice like stop like when do they go like no that what i'm about to do is too much right it is too you know the 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 means in this case do not justify the ends uh you know no matter how noble those ends might be and so mm -hmm. i think like when you combine sort of criminal behavior or behavior that would be seen you know as criminal or on the outs or or goes against society with this powerful sense of justice or morality is we can get like some really complicated and and interesting motivations and 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 sort of ideas for your character and from thinking from purely from a role-playing perspective like it also gives your dm like so many things they can <laughs> set you up for and mm -hmm. and to play off of uh to generate adventures that um that i think it's uh it's really fun yeah yeah one of my one of my favorite from more recent fantasy would have to be davos the onion knight mm. like yeah, yeah, it's just it's just an interesting story of just he's just a sm smuggler trying to make his way and then he gets caught but he gets caught helping still gets <laughs> a little bit of uh, punishment but he's like you know what you know you're right fair. you know fair is fair I, I get it it's fair it's whatever I, w I was doing the thing <laughs> right right yeah I I mean this is I think a, a character like this works really well in a setting where there's like a strong sort of central authority figure with legitimate power that that that's sort of doing something nefarious or un, unjust you know some of where it's yeah, like overreaching yeah. overreaching right yeah you know and 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 again this is sort of where i see it coming up against the noble outlaw you know the robin hood type where it's like yeah I, i'm gonna steal from the rich to give to the poor because that's what's right that's what you know it, it, it's mm -hmm. what they it's what they need what what the sheriff is doing what the prince is doing whatever is is wrong like it doesn't matter that they have the authority of law it doesn't matter that most people seem to accept it like it's still wrong um mm -hmm. and so that opens up the door to all kinds of uh you know interesting questions and scenarios you can uh throw the uh the the uh the character in and, and see what happens um and and um lots of i don't know lots of good tense uh, gaming moments can come from that Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Um, uh, another another archetype that we have here uh, is the, uh, the 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 king of thieves, uh, mm -hmm. just the like the, the the best of the best. The you yeah, know. Uh, of, of something that's that's similar to like a, a you know a 
sort of classic hacker type where it's like, you know, oh, they said I couldn't get into this place, right? They said it can't be done. Mm -hmm. I'll show them, right? That's that's sort of yeah. how I, I I think of of, of these types is is it, it's mostly for the bragging rights, right? Like it, it you know, breaking in someplace, getting you know, mm -hmm. getting this uh, this you know the, the king's jewels or the 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 dragon's hoard or whatever, just to say you did it, just because everybody was like it can't be done, it just it can't be. No one can break in here. Nobody can do this. No mm -hmm. one can sneak past this thing, or no one can pull this off. That that this scoundrel archetype is like I can. I will challenge accept it. And so like mm -hmm. that that sense of 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 wanting to be competitive, of needing to be competitive and 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 also like needing others to know, to see uh is also a component of it cuz you could just be doing it for themselves just like, you know, nobody said I could, but I'll, I'll show them. And mm -hmm. and that's yeah, you know, I think that's a, a a fun way to play a character, but like you take it to the next level when it's like, no, I did this thing nobody wanted me to do. <laughs> I, here I am. Yeah. Look, see, and and then uh, you know having to deal with the consequences of that. Uh, yeah, pretty much anything that's going to land a character mine into hot water and like make things worse for them, I, I tend to lean into because it just makes the DM's job just a little easier, uh, and mm -hmm. and helps to generate adventure. And so this archetype really leans heavily into that. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm the king of the thieves. Nobody can stop me. I can steal anything, steal anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I think of that kind of that that hubris, and uh, uh, I think of Archer for some reason, um, mm. <laughs> considering he's he's one that. He's really good at what he does. He's got to brag about it. And he wants, he's the, he's the greatest secret agent in the world, but God, is he just sometimes just annoying and just, uh, just uh, <laughs> always just effing it up, uh, and making it harder on himself. Uh, he's just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't really know where to put him in our, our little list of, uh, <laughs> of archetypes. Oh, sure. Well, a lot, a lot um, of our, a lot of ideas fall in, uh, fall into, uh, you know, a lot of these categories here. That's what I love about them is they can, you can mix and match mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, like, yeah, very yeah. cool. Very cool. Cause <laughs> like one, one character I love and I love thinking about him as a scoundrel, even though he technically isn't, but it's Saitama from one punch man. Like mm. only a All few right. people actually know his value but everyone else thinks he's trying to get one over on everybody. It's all about him. Okay. It's all about all right. just, but he does want to be the best. He wants to be the strongest sure. hero and that's what he is. But the problem is, is how that, how he relates that and relates that to everyone. Like it just doesn't, it never lands. It always comes off as he's being smug or, or right. he's being dismissive <laughs> or whatever. And I just, I love that circumstance creates a scoundrel it, or like the ability to do that where he's not necessarily yeah. seeking out to be a scoundrel but he is perceived as such because of his abilities um yeah 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 perception's a big thing isn't it right your character's reputation their how others mm -hmm. see their actions and and the light of it really is is in many ways what makes them a scoundrel you know uh and i so i, I can definitely see that I, for a minute i was like wait a minute no no he's the most straightforward <laughs> archetype you could think of he's the strongest one punch but like no i got exactly you. Yeah, nobody else sees it yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because it's just the way it, when you're not when you don't work on your own pr like he's like the uh -huh. anti, I guess he'd be the anti King of Thieves because he has mm -hmm. no PR whatsoever. People think that something's up whenever it, it could just be like, no, I'm the strongest. Like, no. you don't know me? Yeah, nobody's now. the strongest. Uh, what are you talking about? Come on. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but a couple, a couple more of my favorite, like, uh, inspirations to draw on from this. Like to me, Sherlock Holmes, total scoundrel. Mm -hmm. He outwits everyone. He's a total outsider with society because he's too smart he outthinks everyone, and and uh, you know, depending on the version you're 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 intaking, whether it's books or what version of some kind of TV or movie, you know, yeah. there's varying degrees of the use of violence and everything. Um, oh, sure. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's like Sherlock Holmes to me is is one of the one of the great literary scoundrels of all time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could definitely see, especially consider the 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 context of the the you know the original stories are written in. There's not really 
detectives anywhere. Like that's kind of just mm-hmm. this guy who's yeah. making this you know, the first for you know uh, literary figure aside, sort of the first to kind of exist in this space of of, of out thinking uh, uh, mm-hmm. criminals. Um, so yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and I think one of my favorite scoundrels, uh, just just because of the way he's portrayed, is is Chaucer from A Knight's Tale. Like mm. I love Paul Bettany's version of of Chaucer. He's a he's a bard that has a gambling problem, and that that man that puts some hiccups in there for for them. Uh, but you know he he does what he's supposed to do, and uh, you know uh-huh. everybody's everybody still wants to play with him. But he does kind of have some hiccups there. Uh, and uh, uh, but but for the most part, you know he's he's one it's somebody you want in the party. So. Uh, right. You yes. need somebody to give you introductions when you go to places. So <laughs> certainly, certainly. Also, Knight's Tale is one of the best D and D movies out there. It's just a great movie. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, Chaucer from that is a uh, is a good archetype from uh, for scoundrels. Yeah, I, I, when I think of like scoundrels as a type, like I said before, they're they're very much tied in with like the the aesthetic of D and D, and I think that that part of that is is the way that D kind of posits a world in which legitimate authority has kind of broken down otherwise like mm-hmm. the cops would show up and do this i don't you know or like whatever the fantasy equivalent is like it there's a reason adventurers exist to to yeah. meet some sort of need right whether it's their own to like rob tombs and fight monsters or save the world like it suggests that that these people that sort of exist on the fringes uh of, of society um have a place and a purpose and and um yeah i love uh, i love all these i i i i'm like easily now i got i got like the next five characters i want to play uh, uh mm-hmm. talked up but um yeah love uh, love a good scoundrel they they steal everything <laughs> else including your heart and that's what a scoundrel <laughs> should do absolutely A lover's heart. A lover. Lover. Steal the heart of your lover. Love your lover.